Jelena Popovich is the writer, director and producer of Man of God, a film about the life of Saint Nectarios. In an exclusive interview with Culturescope, Jelena talks about the value of orthodoxy in her life and in the life of the film's collaborators. We cannot take the risk of him becoming a patriarch. He consorts with harlots on the streets. I know it is hard for you to believe that he can be a Judas, but it's true, Your Holiness. I'm not even sure about his good heart. You think that you can come here and pretend to be holy? I'm starting to think that you're not human. You seem to be the real deal. No wonder they don't like you. We will demand Patriarch Sophrony to be removed and place you in his position. Yelena, the movie was made in cooperation with the Vatobevi Monastery of the Holy Mount Athos. It will soon be in cinemas both in Cyprus and Greece and it is a homage that's paid to Saint Nectarios 100 years after his passage to eternal life. What was your inspiration behind the visual narrative of the film? Simply in 2012 when I was in Belgrade, um, I went to this monastery and, and uh, I just simply bought a book about Saint Nectarius because he was one of the saints that I, I, I heard about but I didn't know exactly his story and uh, I decided I was living in Los Angeles at the time in the United States and I was just visiting Serbia my father at the time had passed and it's been a year since him passing and I, I bought a book and, and I wanted to read something on the way back to Los Angeles and then when I read about him it's when I was struck like with the lightning, you know, it was, it was something, I was extremely inspired and moved by his story. And I felt that it had elements that it would be uh, very useful nowadays. You know, uh, there, there were some elements in it that are very universal that I could share with the audience and I felt it would be a good film. I kept going with it, I didn't give up. And uh, thanks to St. Nectarius, I really believe uh, the film got made at the end. <laughs> What should viewers take away from the film? I hope it, it transcends to the audience, that it, that it, that it helps people. That, that was my main goal, because I feel that his story has very much that potential to help people, to encourage people, to enlighten people, uplift people, all of these great things that we all need, especially nowadays. Before you write a script, actual script, you usually have to have some kind of outline, an idea, storyline and, and, and you have to decide what is this film really about you know you can make 20 different films about somebody you know but it's always better to have a, a somewhat of a premise to a story that you're you're trying to tell I was in Athens and I went to Egina for the first time and uh, I took um, that outline and I and I put it on his tomb when I went to pray to him and I asked him you know if it's his will if it's God's will to please help me to make this film because obviously without his blessing and uh, it's not going to be possible. Somehow the doors were opening. I ended up getting a really good uh, Greek producer, uh, Kostas Lambropoulos. I ended up getting an amazing actor to play, uh, who was really meant to play this role, Iris Vitalis. I ended up working with an incredible actors, uh, Greek actors, and then there were some, uh, including some international cast, uh, Mickey Rourke and Alexander Petrov. I ended up working with incredible director of photography, costume designer, all the people were on board with this all of a sudden, a little by little as the things were unfolding. And obviously without the help of uh, Yeron Daifram from uh, Vatopedi, this wouldn't have happened. So I wanna thank him for this. We were at uh, Moscow International Film Festival. Uh, we, we actually won audience award in the main competition for the best film. We just, uh, we were also, we screened the film at the Los Angeles Greek Film Festival. We also won audience award. We were there nominated for the best film, for the best director and the best actor. Uh, but we also won audience award. And, and we, we are also uh, in the competition in Phoenix Film Festival in the US. Uh, and that's gonna be, uh, the film is gonna be playing uh, August 14th and 15th. So, and we also have some other submissions and, but we'll see. I will have to, I'll be able to talk about it subject to being accepted, you know, in the festival. Mickey Rook has a short yet impactful role in the film. What was he like during filming and what was his encounter like with orthodoxy? I was thinking of that role, it plays a role of a paralyzed man who 
uh, in the end of the movie, obviously, he, it's a true story. There was a man who was next to St. Nectarius' bed in the hospital, and after St. Nectarius died, who got up and walked after St. Nectarius passed away after a contact with his undershirt. I thought the movie should be done in English and have a couple of international names. And, and one of people I thought about was Mickey Work for that particular role. That was my at least wish at the beginning. And the reason I thought of him was because apart from him being a, a fantastic actor, uh, obviously we know what he's capable of on, on that level. Uh, he's a great actor, but also he's somebody who, who has the depth to play that role, but also somebody who has a lot of uh, heart and, and, and you, he's all, he suffered, he suffered in his life and he's been troubled and he was trying, he's trying to find a way, you know, and he's sort of a fighter, you know, so I felt that, that somebody like that would be a good person to play that role. He read a script and he was willing to do it. And, and uh, one thing that I can say about him, uh, that his approach to this role was absolutely incredible. He really uh, went all the way uh, emotionally to give me whatever he could because he knew how deep this, this performance had to be and how difficult it was. And he really, uh, all I can say, I'm very grateful that he was willing to do that and that he was just, he did it really from his heart. There was a press conference and I was there, but when we were done, I asked him, I actually took him to a church, St. Nectarius Church in Camariza, where Yaronda Nectarius Vitalis was living. Uh, now he's passed away. Uh, and uh, he walked into the church and he kneeled down in prayer and he even had the priest pray over him. And when he walked out of the church, he was so blown away. He sat there and he said that that was the most important thing he's done coming to Greece. I understand why the people of Egypt love you. We had you here for a short time and you've performed miracles. You're a holy man, your grace. I lost my eyesight due to illness when I was very little. There is so much light in your presence. We feel that you don't exercise enough authority. A healthy balance between kindness and authority is best. Where is the evidence of my crime? an accusation that condemns me to a moral death. If it had been done to me, what has been done to you, I would not go to church anymore. Holy man of God, will you please pray for me? The position of power is like a cancer. It eats at you slowly. I wish I would have faith. you say something? It's not enough that you are trying to persuade everyone in here to become a priest. Now you're grooming nuns from here too. What are you doing with these women? Why are you doing this? Refrain from coming here. My body may be withering away, but my soul is not.